Hello everybody, this is Paul from Off Grid Desert Farming News with Paul and Adrian. This is May the 20th, 2024. I want to welcome you to our broadcast. Uh, if this is your first time here on our channel, please make sure that you're subscribed and hit that black notification bell so you will be notified of our upcoming broadcast. But so, um, a lot of things have been happening in the last 24 hours. Uh, we did not think that we would be talking about this the last couple hours, but uh, the death of Iranian President Rossi has been confirmed now. Uh, we uh, had that video earlier yesterday. In fact, um, we had just finished up our broadcast. Let me show you uh, on the screen. We had just finished this uh, broadcast up with Medvedev. Uh, Medvedev warns NATO you are playing with fire and London and Paris will be the targets of Russian missiles if you continue. Now, a lot of people, they didn't even watch that one because it was overshadowed by the helicopter crash of the president of Iran. So if you have not watched that video right here with Medvedev, please make sure you see that. It's only 30 minutes long. But um, according to the latest news, uh, the bodies of the Iranian president, the foreign minister, the governor of uh, one of the provinces of Azerbaijan, uh, and other officials were killed in that crash. So far, they are ruling it out as an accident, but Iran says that they are open to an investigation. So let's go ahead and catch you up on the news. Iranian President Rossi, foreign minister confirmed dead in helicopter crash. Iranian media has, <clears throat> has confirmed the death of Iranian President Ibrahim Rossi, 63 years old, along with Foreign Minister Hossein Amir Abdullian, in a helicopter crash on the way back from an official visit to Azerbaijan early on Sunday. And this is the picture of the President of Iran. Now, um, this guy... By the way, folks, if you do not know, he's, his nickname is the Butcher of Tehran. He is responsible for over uh, 30,000 Iranian deaths. He signed the death warrants of over 30,000 Iranians. They call him the Butcher of Tehran. He was an animal, folks. He wasn't a good guy. You know, he, he wasn't a good man. He, he uh, So... It won't be too much of a loss. I know a lot of people in Iran, they're afraid to celebrate. But uh, there are evil people in the world, folks. You know, there are some really evil people in the world. I don't know if you remember a couple weeks ago about uh, three surfers down in Mexico that they were killed for their tires on their car. I mean, these were just three guys going down surfing in Mexico and they were carjacked. And the perpetrators killed all of them for their tires on their vehicle. Instead of just saying, hey, man, you know, we want your tires. Can we have your tires? You know, we don't want to kill you, but, uh, you know, we really want your tires, man. You know, so they just killed them. They killed them for their tires. So there is a lot of evil in the world, folks, whether you want to believe it or not. You know, you do have a choice every morning when you wake up. You can wake up in the morning, get your coffee, and you can say, am I going to be a good person today or am I going to be an evil person today? Am I going to try to help people and, and be kind to people and love on people and show the love of God? Or am I going to go out and scheme and try to steal and rob and just be the most nasty person I can be? You know, you got a choice. Everybody has a choice, folks. So let's go ahead and read the article on this. But, you know, you do have a choice of whether you're an evil person or a good person. And that choice is completely up to you. Reuters News also confirmed Rossi's death. President Rossi, the foreign minister, and all the passengers in the helicopter were killed in the crash, a senior official told the outlet on the condition of anonymy. This is a summary. Iran State Television has confirmed the death of President Ibrahim Rossi. An Iranian official tells Reuters... President Rossi's helicopter was completely burned in the crash. Unfortunately, all the passengers are feared dead. We do know that right now. Um, 
The head of the Red Crescents has confirmed the location of President Rossi's helicopter, and it has been found. <clears throat> Some initial photos of the area where the helicopter went down have emerged some 15 hours after the crash. Um, I guess this is the, um, the crash site right here. Um, below, video showing the Bell helicopter, which was transporting the president, is said to be decades old. Also, as Iran's aviation sector has languished many years under U.S. sanctions. So this, um, I think this is the last uh, video that came out. Um, let me see if they're going to play this. But this was the last video uh, from the helicopter right here. As you can see, though, the, it looks like the, cl uh, the clouds were clear, folks. Um, this was the last video that was transmitted from the helicopter. Uh, let me play it again. We do have another version of it, but here's the president of Iran. Um, so I don't know uh, where all of the clouds and the fogs came from. Like I said, there were three helicopters traveling in this group. And what I don't understand is why the two other helicopters didn't stop or make a circle and uh, and come back to see if they could find them. But uh, here is the uh, foreign minister that died. It looks like some kind of Alatola right here. Uh, maybe this is the uh, the governor of Azerbaijan. We're not really sure who this guy is. But um, it's kind of funny. But if you look at the video from, uh, I mean, the outside of the helicopter, it does look like that. See, it's clear, folks. It, it It's not foggy. It's not rainy. It's not snowy. So something is kind of strange. They are attributing this crash um, to the weather. Uh, I know when they were looking for the helicopter, it was very, very overcast, rainy, snowy. <clears throat> so it's probably going to be um, a while before we really know the truth of what is going on. But I do have some breaking news here that the uh, President Vladimir Putin in Russia is still saying that this was an assassination. This was a sabotage of his helicopters. Sabotage of Rossi's helicopter is seen by Moscow. Putin has called the ambassador of Iran for information. Let's find the real causes of the crash. The Turkish media also sees murder behind Rossi's death. So this is a picture of President Vladimir Putin and the president of Iran. Russia, as does Turkey, sees the possibility of sabotage on the helicopter of the Iranian president, Ibrahim Rossi, as still existing. According to fully verified information, the Russian President Vladimir Putin called an emergency meeting with Russian defense and security officials at his Kremlin office on Sunday night at 10 p.m. to discuss the crash of the Iranian president's helicopter. He then asked the Iranian ambassador to Moscow to attend the meeting. We remind you that it was first revealed yesterday by War News 24-7 that Russians talked unofficially about the sabotage of Ibrahim Rossi's helicopter. Putin said, let's find the real reasons for the crash. Today, the Secretary of the Russian Security Council, Sergei Sogu, emphasized that Russia is ready to assist the investigation into the causes of the helicopter crash, which claimed Rossi's life. Now, Secretary of the Security Council of Russia, Sergei Sogu, in a telegram addressed to the Secretary of the Supreme National Security Council of Iran, expressed his condolences for the death of the Iranian President Ibrahim Rossi after the crash of the helicopter. Sogu assured that the Russian Federation is ready to assist the investigation of the incident. Please accept our deepest uh, condolences on the tragic death of the Iranian President Rossi, we mourn with the Iranian people. The Russian side expresses its readiness to provide all the necessary assistance to establish the real reasons for the crash of the helicopter which Rossi was in. The press service of the Security Council of the Russian Federation said, citing the Telegram post, Why is Russia talking about the real causes of the crash, even asking to assist 
the investigation. And why did he invite the Iranian ambassador to the security meeting under Vladimir Putin in Moscow yesterday? He apparently wanted to inform Tehran immediately of a specific security issue that has arisen. Things are starting to take a bad turn for the entire Middle East, especially if it turns out to be sabotage. The country of Turkey, the media sees murder behind Rossi's death. Turkish President Recep Erdogan again sent his condolences for the death of the Iranian President Ibrahim Rossi and his entourage in the helicopter crash. At the same time, the Turkish President also expressed Turkey's support to the people of Iran during a ceremony to appoint a judges and prosecutors. So let's keep on going down this article. I guess the article is over, but this is very important, folks. Like I said, we really, we really don't know uh, the causes of the crash of the helicopter. So far, uh, it has been attributed to bad weather that the helicopter could not see, and it ran and smashed into a mountain. That is the most logical explanation so far, but President Putin is raising a red flag, and so is the leader of Turkey, and they want to investigate the crash site to see if any foul play was involved. They do have uh, instruments and technology to detect a bomb, uh, the bomb residue, uh, any blast signature in the helicopter. They can determine whether it did crash and uh, caught on fire or if uh, there was a bomb and the bomb exploded uh, and caused the helicopter to crash. So um, they're going to investigate it, I guess, and we'll find out probably in the coming days and weeks uh, what really happened. Uh, this is just more breaking news. Iran announces interim president after Rossi's helicopter hit a mountain and disintegrated. So this is just pictures from the crash scene. Uh, very, very wooded area right here uh, where the helicopter crashed. Uh, bodies of the deceased were hiked out of the remote region of the crash. They had to be physically carried out on stretchers by rescuers who spent hours reaching the site amid difficult Sunday and overnight weather conditions. State media has since indicated that aboard the presidential helicopter were nine people in total, including bodyguards and clerics. Their aging Bell helicopter had reportedly hit a mountain and disintegrated amid high fog and low visibility conditions. This was not at all a hard landing uh, that they initially informed the media. So, um, like I said, the initial assessment uh, is that um, this was a crash um, due to weather conditions. Uh, that is what we are going on so far. This is the picture of President Rossi, and uh, it looks like the tail section of the helicopter right here, I guess, is where uh, the fire was. So, like I said, we won't really know until about uh, a week what really happened, but this is the um, <clears throat> the replacement of uh, the president right here. This is the vice president, and now they, um, they anointed him as the president of Iran. This also is the replacement of the foreign minister. This is the new foreign minister, Ali Baghher, B-A-G-H-E-R. So they have replaced both officials uh, and their government is functioning as normal according to the last, um, the last information that we have. Let's keep on going. Video from inside the helicopter shortly before the crash was published by Tehran. The Iran's president looked calm, unable to imagine what was to come. So this is the foreign minister. This is a, one of the Alatolas. Uh, Iran r released the video. So let me play this video, folks. Like I said, um, if you look at the video, according to this video here, um, if you look outside, the weather is clear. Like I said, this is the last video that came out of the helicopter. This is the president of Iran here. It's the foreign minister, Alatola here. 
uh, one of the nine that died. But if you can see outside the window, it's clear. The weather looks like it's okay. So, like I said, there is a lot of conjecture of what really happened. Did they really crash uh, in a bad weather event, or were they shot down, or was there a bomb on the helicopter? We really don't know right now, folks. But for all indications, they are blaming this now uh, on the weather. So, like I said, we'll have to see what happens. We also have breaking news in the gold and silver front. This news is just coming in. Uh, silver bullion hits the limit up trading at $35.25 in China. So China is going crazy over silver right now. Gold is also up. Silver bullion has risen so significantly in Asia this morning that it has hit the limit up, which is the level at which trading must halt to give people time to rethink what's going on and to prevent a market melt-up. China silver is now trading near $35.25 a troy ounce today. So this is like a, um, a stop uh, when something rises or falls so quickly, they actually halt the market to give people a little bit of time to, uh, to settle down uh, before something major happens. But uh, let's go to Kitco. Uh, this is Kitco Gold and Silver. Right now, gold is trading at $2,423 an ounce. Uh, the regular spot market on silver. Silver is up to $31.94. So we've actually been waiting, or the whole world has been waiting. When will gold and silver finally start skyrocketing? Well, folks, we may be right now in that period of time when you're going to see $3,000 gold, maybe $50 silver again. If the geopolitical events around the world keep increasing and uh, people start panicking and worrying, they're, they're going to put their money into gold and silver, which <clears throat> has historically been a safe haven for assets. So that's what we're seeing right now. Like I said, this is a record for gold. Uh, gold actually reached... Um, $2,449 earlier today. It is down a little bit. You can see the graph. So we'll keep an eye on that, folks. But there is a lot of news going on. Let me see if I can find uh, some more news for you. This is just more news coming in from TASS, Russian News Agency. Um, President, Foreign Minister of Iran died in helicopter crash. This is the major news all over the news media around the world. Iranian president dies in a helicopter crash. Live updates. This is from RT Television. So I'm not going to keep repeating this. Um, this is just more breaking news from last night. Gold reached $2,430. Silver was up to $32. Silver is down just a little bit. Gold and silver trading in Asia has caused the price of one troy ounce of gold to rise at least $19. Silver rose $1.27. Investors are now pouring into gold and silver because of the geopolitical events happening around the world. This is more breaking news. Iran's nuclear negotiator, Al Baghiri, has been named as acting foreign minister of Iran. So this is the new foreign minister of Iran. He takes over from the guy that just died. Iran's veteran nuclear negotiator, Al Bakhiri, a harsh critic of the West, was Monday named acting foreign minister to replace the top diplomat killed in a helicopter crash along with the president. Bag Bakhiri, 56 years old, has served as deputy to the foreign minister of the Islamic Republic. Hossein Amir Abdullian, who perished along with the Iranian president, Ibrahim Rossi, seven and seven others in the accident. So this, like I said, is the new foreign minister, uh, like our secretary of state. Just more breaking news about the president. So let's go to some other news about Ukraine. This is uh, breaking news from last night. 
The United Kingdom prepares to deliver 100 more Storm Shadow missiles to Ukraine. The British now have given Ukraine permission to freely use its weapons against the Russian soil. So this is the Storm Shadow that has been inflicting a lot of damage on Russia the last six months. The UK Defense Secretary Grant Snaps have announced the British government will supply Kiev with 100 missiles in May. According to an interview with the Sun newspaper published on May the 18th, 2024, according to Snaps, everything we hold dear is at risk if Ukraine falls under the tyrannical rule of the Russian President Vladimir Putin. Warm words are not enough. Every nation that values freedom must step up efforts to do what it can as quickly as possible to ensure that the Ukrainian armed forces can deal with the uh, illegal invasion. Since early May, the UK has delivered 80 air defense missiles to Ukraine as expected to deliver another uh, 20 before June. Well, I have I have breaking news for you, uh, Snaps, Grant Snaps, the U.S. Defense Secretary. If it wasn't for your country, Britain, the, U- the UK, we would have peace right now in Ukraine. Do you know that, you imbecile? You are an imbecile because it's your former president, Boris Johnson, who took his little A-double-S over to Ukraine and scuttled the peace agreements. There was a peace agreement that was signed by Russia and Ukraine. Uh, It wasn't signed by Ukraine, but Russia signed off on it in 2022. But your president, your prime minister, Boris Johnson, took his little butt over to Ukraine under the command of NATO and the U.S. to scuttle that peace agreement. So there would not be a war right now going on in Ukraine. Over 600,000 people would not have died, over a million wounded, because your country, the U.K., didn't want peace. That's why we have war, so don't give me this crap. Uh, You are the responsible for this war continuing and all of these people dying. You know, that's the truth, folks. You know, we could have had peace. I mean, I get fired up. It pisses me off every time I think about it that all these people in Ukraine did not have to die, but we didn't want peace. We want war. So we're going to get war, folks. We're going to get it. We also have breaking news coming in that Russia has a new secret weapon called the Topol, T-O-B-O-L, Western media panics over Putin's secret weapon. The Western media are sounding the alarm about the secret weapon. The British press is alarmed to report that Russia now Russia's army has now a secret weapon. This is a new electronic warfare system that Russia has just invented and has put on the battlefield. By this, the British media means the latest electronic warfare system called the Tobol. It is reported that it is capable of jamming signals from a satellite as well as creating a false target on the radar. Observers write that so far the armed forces of the Russian Federation have only a few Topolovs, I guess that's what they call it, T-O-B-O-L-O-V-S, but given the power of the Russian military industrial complex, very soon there will be many such installations. Moreover, the Topol has proven itself to be very excellent. The electronic warfare installation was allegedly already used during a special operation, which made it possible for the Russian army to completely jam out NATO military equipment, which is stuffed with units of the armed forces of Ukraine. By the way, it is alleged that with their help, the Russian group successfully jammed the signals of the U.S. Starlink satellite system, access to which was provided by uh, to the nationalists by Elon Musk's company SpaceX. The British are also confident that several Topolovs are now in service with the Russian armed forces in Kaliningrad. The media explains such suspicions by serious malfunctions in the operation of navigation equipment on passenger planes flying into Poland. Of course, Western honest journalists present all this with the sauce criminals from Russia, we should not pay attention to the corrupt press of the Anglo-Saxons if you consider 
that reconnaissance NA aircraft and NATO drones are constantly patrolling that region, aiming Ukrainian armed forces missiles at Russian territory. Then the operation of such jammers near the Russian borders is undoubtedly justified. So Russia doesn't have a new secret weapon. It is called the Topolov, a new electronic system that has been jamming uh, the airplanes in the Kaliningrad area. Uh, according to this report, Russia will be producing more of these weapons. <clears throat> we also have breaking news. The UK invites Germany, <clears throat> excuse me, to deliver Taurus KEP uh, D 350s to Ukraine. So uh, the UK wants Germany to deliver these Taurus missiles so they can attack the Crimean Bridge. And let me increase the size uh, so you can see this. UK Defense Secretary Grant Snaps on May the 19th stepped up pressure on Berlin to send Taurus KEPD 350 missiles to Ukraine to allow Kiev to strike facilities on the Russian soil. <clears throat> Ukraine has received other long range missiles, including the Storm Shadow from the UK, the French made Scalp, and it was reported on April 25th that the US had secretly sent more than 100 long range attack on missiles to Kiev. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz is against sending the long-range Taurus 350 missiles to Ukraine as he fears it would risk drawing Berlin into war. So, folks, uh, let me bring you back to the uh, the last video we made yesterday before uh, we learned about the, um, the crash of the president of Iran's helicopter. We discussed this in detail right here on this video we did yesterday morning about Dmitry Medvedev telling uh, London and Paris that they will be the targets of Russian missiles if you continue supplying these scalp, these storm shadow missiles to Ukraine to hit our territory. Please watch that video. You're going to learn a lot of information, but that's what's ongoing right now. The United Kingdom, France, the UK, Germany, the United States, NATO, they're going to continue to provoke Russia until Russia finally launches a nuke at them, folks. They've been trying to provoke them for two years now. And thank God President Vladimir Putin is a patient man because we would already be in a nuclear war if he was like this guy Medvedev. Medvedev is a hothead. He would already have nuked the United States. So, folks, we are getting closer to that time happening. I do believe that the United States and NATO and all of these NATO countries will continue to provoke Russia until Russia finally has enough. I believe that's going to happen. So let's talk about what's really happening in Russia. Russian economic growth hits 5.4%, folks. That is a record. That's a record growth in Russia. The economy expanded in the first quarter despite Western sanctions, according to the National Statistics Service. So the Russian economy, folks, is booming, is the hottest economy right now in Europe. Do you realize that? So all of these sanctions... All of these sanction packages that Europe and France and Germany and the United States and NATO placed on Russia, it has done nothing but to encourage the Russian economy to explode. The Russian gross domestic product, the GDP, grew by 5.4% year on year in the first quarter of 2024, the state uh, statistics agency Rostat said in a preliminary report published on Friday. According to the estimate, Russia saw robust, robust growth in the retail turnover up to 10.5%, manufacturing up 8.8%, construction up 3.5%. The Rostov data aligns with earlier estimates from Economic Ministry, but exceeds that of the Bank of Russia at 4.6% growth. Um, so as a result... Uh, the GDB, uh, uh, they are now, uh, Russia's 
GDP is more uh, than all of the European countries right now. In April, the International Monetary Fund said it expects the Russian economy to grow faster than all the advanced economies in 2024. The GDP is forecast to expand by at least 3.2% the rest of the year, exceeding the expected growth rates for the U.S., 2.7%, the U.K., 0.5%, Germany, 0.2%, and France, 0.7%. So, folks, all of these sanctions that they put on Russia has backfired on the United States and the European Union, folks. They're basically, their economy is basically in the toilet. I mean, you got a 0.2% in Germany, 0.7% in France, 0.5% in the UK, and only 27 in the United States. So, folks, all we did was make Russia stronger. This war that we provoked, that we caused, that we invented, has done nothing but to strengthen the Russian economy, to strengthen the Russian resolve. Because of this war, Russia's military has doubled in size. So you can blame Joe Biden, you can blame Jim Stallenberg and all these warmongers for making Russia great again. That's what we did, folks. We made Russia great again. NATO and the United States has made Russia great again. Their economy is outperforming all the Western economies put together. Thank you, Joe Biden. Have another ice cream cone. Let's start another war. How about that? Let's start a war with Iran next. What else have you got up your sleeve, you dumbass? I'm sorry, folks. You know, our leaders are totally nuts. They're crazy. They're psychopathic. They hate Russia so much that all they've done with their hate is make Russia great again while their Western economies are going into the toilet. I mean, go figure. You know, go figure. I did want to bring you a story that nobody else is reporting on, um, that there is slavery now going on right now in Africa, that Africans are selling African children like they used to do 300 years ago. But nobody's talking about this, folks. Video below shows another sale of children taking place in the Congo in Africa. Local Africans are grabbing the children from rival villages march them to the mines, the gold mines, the diamond mines, the ruby mines, and sell them to the miners or mining company. This, ladies and gentlemen, is called international rule-based order. So the world, the world is not saying anything about this. This is the video. Here is the kids right here. As you can see, and um, I, I, I guess I really shouldn't play the video because uh, uh, of the policies. But here it looks like a hundred children, and um, I'm not going to play the video, folks, because I don't want to get any uh, policy deals. But um, I will leave the link in the description box. You can watch the video yourself. But there was no media coverage about this. No bleeding heart, sensitive, tolerant, liberal progressives decrying modern day slavery. No Black Lives Matter protests. No economic sanctions. No deployment of our military. Nothing from the United Nations. But Black people in Africa are selling black children to the miners that own these diamond mines, gold mines in Africa, folks. So slavery is alive and well in Africa, but nobody's saying a thing about it. And like I said, um, you can go and watch the video. I, I was going to play it, but um, the Holy Spirit checked me there. I don't want to get in trouble, but uh, that's what's happening in the world, folks. Before we go, I do want to make sure that you are right with Jesus Christ. If you do not know Jesus Christ, folks, time is running out. Uh, so many crazy things happening in the world. There is only one way to heaven, and that's through the blood of Jesus Christ. So if you don't know and you want to make sure that you're going to heaven, if you will say this prayer, Jesus Christ will save you right now. Just say, Dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner, Lord. And I ask you right now to forgive me of all of my sins and wash them away with your precious blood. I believe that you are the son of God and I believe that you died on that cross and you shed your blood for me and you rose again the third day. Thank you for saving my soul. Thank you for forgiving all of my sins 
and thank you for giving me eternal life. Amen. So folks, uh, all I can say is buckle up your seatbelts. We have just got started this year. There's going to be a whole lot of crazy things happening in the coming weeks, the coming months. Uh, Russia is making their massive counteroffensive against Kharkov, uh, probably Odessa, uh, Sumni, Chavish Yar. Uh, we have the situation now going on in Iran. If Iran and Russia find out that the helicopter was sabotaged, then it will be blamed on Israel, folks. And then we will have a major escalation. So thank you for watching our channel. Please share our videos out and make sure that you watch that video from yesterday. This one right here with Dmitry Medvedev to catch up on all our news. So God bless you. Remember, Jesus Christ loves you. He's coming back soon. Don't be caught dead without him. Bye-bye.